yourself a cold one. They strike them, huh? And listen to Ross Tucker break down the top college prospects on another tasty edition of The College Draft. Yeah, it is Daddy Soda time here on the College Draft Podcast. We are, of course, presented by DraftKings. Love those dudes and love this dude. My guy, Emery Hunt. I'm convinced he is my brother from another mother in terms of his passion. I mean, it's Friday night. And let me just tell you, we're the only two people I know of that on Friday night, I am watching a high school game on my laptop in my hotel room at West Point while Emery is tweeting about CFL quarterback Trey Ford. Like, a lot of people really like football. A lot of people love football. There's certain people, and I've met them in my life, and I I know right away, pretty much, it's just like a disease. It's a sickness, and I mean that as a compliment. It's a passion. And Emory might even have it worse than me. I mean, Emory watches leagues I've never even heard of, which is why, by the way, you need to follow him on social media at FBall Game Plan on Twitter. Football Game Plan on YouTube is his highly successful YouTube page. And then I, I can't imagine any of you don't get the draft guide that if you listen or watch this show, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. If you listen or watch this show religiously, I'd be shocked. If you didn't get the draft guide, but if you don't, it's footballgameplan.com slash 2024 draft guide. I've been saying it for like a year. We are a couple years away from everybody knowing about Emery and him being a big star because he's killing it on CBS Sports HQ, which is growing fast. And they got a lot of people, you you know, Brady Quinn's on there and Danny Cannell, whatever. Emery kills it on CBS Sports HQ. So those of you that listen to this show, you'll be able to say when he's doing broadcast stuff or whatever. I knew I knew Emery when he was when when he was started a couple years ago doing the college draft podcast with Ross. He's the man. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL on social media. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. Love those of you that engage on any of the platforms in any way. And what I love about the show is we talk about the biggest games in college football. So if you like college football, you came to the right place. We make at least four bets against the spread for college football. And Emory is having a terrific year. So I know a lot of people come primarily for the college football bets now. Maybe you come over from the Even Money NFL betting podcast. That's great. But then we also talk prospects. We like talking about players. Sometimes we'll even talk some overarching themes of college football. Emery, you were 2-2 two and two last week. It's interesting um, because even the ones you got wrong, man, I felt like you were on the right side. <laughs> Let's start with Maryland, Ohio State. You took Maryland – getting 18 points. They were like winning the game in the second half. Somehow they lost 37-17. Now, I didn't watch it, Emery, because I was doing Army-Boston College, which was a great game, by the way, at the same time. But that is a bad beat. I don't know if you were following it closely, Emery, because you had Maryland getting the 18 points. I don't know. Did, did Ohio State just keep pouring it on? Did Ryan Day know what the spread was? What happened there? You know how we say a football game is determined by three plays? And I've had this issue with the Colts in the NFL with Shane Steichen leaving points on the field. And sometimes they've come back to bite him in the butt. That happened in the Maryland game right before a half. Instead of just kicking a field goal and going up by three points, um, they tried to go for it, and Talia Tungavaloa, Talia Tungavaloa, ran a play and didn't get the ball, uh, didn't get the next play off in time, and time expired on the head. They were in, they were on the twenty yard line, so that's one. And then second, they're consistently moving the ball downfield against Ohio State, and then 
he throws an inexcusable interception right to the defender of Ohio State, which killed the drive, and that started Ohio State's comeback. It was 10 nothing, right? It was 10 nothing. They could have won. It was 10 nothing. Maryland was winning. They were winning, and they, they were winning coming out of half, too. And so, and they were driving again. So it was those plays that she was like, bro, you got to be kidding me. And then on then the end of the game, you know, it was a it was a you know, Ohio State got into the turnover and uh they're running the clock out, but it's on fourth down, they're in field goal range, they're not just gonna go for it on fourth down, just gonna kick the field goal, and that's what got me the bad beat. Wow. That is brutal. Absolutely brutal. I mean, if any of those things didn't happen, you would have won that bet. You know, I, I am curious, since we talked about him a lot last year and in the draft process, Emery, I do want to get your thoughts. Anthony Richardson, who you were the first person that I heard anywhere talk about him being a top 10 pick, talk about maybe even number one overall. He went number four. You talked about that in the spring of 2022. You were talking about that. Before he had, he had barely even played, hadn't even started any games last year yet for Florida. You were all over it, Emery. Um, so I, I, I always bring that up and give you a lot of credit. But since you mentioned the Colts, now Richardson has a uh, sprained AC joint grade three. And he is out for about a month. He had, uh, that's his third injury in his first five games, but he only didn't, he missed a game. So it's really his third injury in his first four games. Just curious your thoughts on that, because I feel like the run, the running was a huge factor in what makes him so special and a huge reason why Steichen and the Colts drafted him, but he has not been able to stay healthy doing it. Right. And, 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 to, I give you another one. I had the Colts winning the division in the preseason um, when they drafted him because of the projected pairing of him and Jonathan Taylor, along with what they already had on defense. They were getting uh, Shaq Leonard back. I was like, this Colts team can win that division, and people thought I was nuts. And for you know, now I'll look at the coat tie for first place, right? Um, but a lot of that was hinted on Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor. And a couple of his injuries are just kind of like fluky. He self-reported, I believe, the concussion after the touchdown. They were on. He was probably on pace to have a five touchdown day against the Houston Texans, right? He scored a touchdown. His his head hit the ground on the score. Then I think he self-reported uh, after a series. Um, and then this one. I mean, I've seen him take ridiculous hits before, and this is the one that gets him. Uh, hurt with the AC joint. Thank God it's just an AC joint and not a broken collarbone or whatnot. Um, but that was something that could happen in the pocket, you know, in terms of the D lineman, you know, driving his shoulder into the into the turf. So it's just a series of unfortunate incidents. It's nothing that that scares you in terms of, oh, uh, he has to change his style or whatnot. It's, I think it's just freak occurrences like the uh, concussion, um, and then this one here. Uh, against Tennessee where d lineman just drove him into the turf. So I, I just feel like he's going to be fine. But it's just weird that this guy, you know, this big 6'4", 250-pound quarterback, it has found himself in these situations where you see quarterbacks get smacked all the time and nothing happens to him. Um, but this one, is, I just think it's one of those situations. Maybe he's too bulked up. I don't know. I don't know what the case may be, but hopefully – he can come back and hopefully Minshew can at least keep this team at 500 when he returns um, because that way they can have that back end push toward the playoffs because, man, everything was starting to gear up toward the Colts because he was playing great in this game against Tennessee. So it's just like, geez, like, come on, man. Like, why why are the football guys teasing us with Anthony Richardson and this Colts football team? They're built to, to win um, in that division. Let's talk about your other loss. You were two and two. Your other loss, you had Washington State getting three and a half. They lost to UCLA 25-17. I didn't watch that game, so I don't know how, how they lost, but obviously you had them getting three and a half. Ended up being a one-score game. Just too many points there. I'll tell you what, man, the Pac-12's rough. 
I mean, Oregon State loses to Washington State. Washington State loses to UCLA. USC's probably, I think USC might lose a couple games by the end of the year with the, with the teams they need to play. You still got Washington, you got Oregon. I mean, the Pac-12 is, it's the best conference in college football probably this year. And it's the, la- the last year of it. It's just right. bananas. Right, and it's, it's, it's you know, it's, they're going out with a bang. And that Washington State game, Washington was up, I think, 10 or 13 nothing and driving again. And just a fluky turnover. And then that's when things started to snowball. They kept turning the ball over and they allowed UCLA to hang around, got back in the game. Uh, you know, Ward had a couple of inter- interceptions on the back end. It was like, yeah, Washington State lost that game more so than UCLA won that game, if that makes sense. But credit UCLA for taking advantage of those bonus possessions, those turnovers, and finding a way to win because they have quietly played tough football on both sides of the line of scrimmage this season. So that's what happened in that game. Washington State was up, going in, kind of like how the Ravens lost yesterday to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They were in control, driving the score, and then drop touchdown pass or turnover or fumble. Like It's just chaos happened at the Rose Bowl uh, Saturday. Yeah, it really did. And then what about Georgia-Kentucky? That one you nailed. I watched that game on TV, and I watched the the video of it this morning because I've got Georgia at Vanderbilt on Saturday at noon for CBS. And you you had the over in that one, Emery. Over 48-and-a-half, Georgia wins 51-13. Georgia hit the over themselves, Emery. Yeah, it wasn't even close to, man. It, it Kentucky usually comes in and puts up a fight against Georgia, then it slowly starts to pull away from the from the Wildcats. This one wasn't close from start to finish. I mean, they marched right down the field, scored, got the ball back quickly, marched right back down the field, scored. It was like, yeah, this game not fun anymore, man. It, it was kind of like the Cowboys San Francisco game where it was just like, all right. This is about to be a, a, a steamroll, and there's no need to continue to watch this. This is not fun. Um, Kentucky couldn't do anything. Throwing the football, you know, Ray Davis, terrific running back. And once they start going to the feel-good stories in the, you know, second quarter, you knew it was a long day for Kentucky. So it was a wrap. You know, Georgia's quarterback's good. Be- I, I mean, yeah. I, I was there was people that were, I know he was like a question mark coming into the year. He looks pretty darn good to me. They're running back. You can't get a clean shot on him. The tight end is obviously, you know, we talked about it last week, you know, one of the best players in college football history. At his, he actually dropped. He dropped a touchdown in the end zone. It was like Rocky IV when Drago got cut open. I was like, oh, my gosh. He's human. He bleeds. It was unbelievable. Um, speaking of that Georgia Vandy game I'm doing, Emery, right now, you can get into that game for 105 bucks on the Game Time app. You know I'm a huge fan of the Game Time app. You can just type right in Nashville or Vanderbilt football. The best deal, they actually have a pretty good vantage point for $162. Literally, while I'm looking at this, for those of you watching, like I'm showing you on the screen, you can see the vantage point of exactly where your ticket is. For all of these, it's amazing. Absolutely love that. You can see what it'll look like from your seat. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code DRAFT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. So again, create an account and redeem code DRAFT, D R A F T, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The last one uh, you nailed, Emery, was you took Wyoming getting six and a half points against Fresno State. They won that game outright, 24-19. Nobody can win in Wyoming. Every game they ever play a top 25 team or a power five team, Wyoming wins every Nobody should ever agree on the schedule to play at Wyoming. Love Wyoming, man. They play a good brand of football. I love the Mountain West Conference, to be completely honest, man. Yeah, they, love it. They play a fantastic. They were like the Sun Belt Conference in terms of how perfect the, the conference is structured. The the teams are geographically. It makes sense. 
Um, and, and they just play consistently good football. Even when the bad teams are having their, their off years, like a Colorado state, usually Colorado state is a, is a very solid team, but man, you got Wyoming, you got Fresno, you got air force who I think should be in the playoff. I'll put that out there half jokingly, but no one wants to play air force this year. And so Wyoming and how they play and especially how they play up for competition you're right. Why are you even scheduling Wyoming? Because they're going to be in a, in that game. Uh, no matter what the point spread is, just don't even bother. Just don't even bet it. Just watch the game for, for entertainment purposes, because they're going to, they're going to always play a very tough uh, brand of ball out there. All right, Emery, we got to get to this upcoming week. Oregon is at Washington. Huge game. Washington is laying three points. Who do you like? Players, and who do you like with the spread? Washington receiver, uh, it's funny to look at that uh, depth chart a couple of years ago because Puka Nakua was at Washington too. And it's like, my goodness, they had a room. Uh, But Jalen McMillan, to me, you know, for a bigger wide receiver, um, probably plays a lot like uh, Tyler Boyd for the Cincinnati Bengals. You know, he's he's savvy to play inside. He's always finding a way to win. I feel like he can play outside, but he really can have a home at the next level as a bigger slot receiver. And I say bigger, he's not 6'5", 230, but, you know, he's a taller slot receiver. You usually want to see slot receivers, or people think slot receivers are these 5'10 and under guys that are quick and shifty. But, man, you, he his route running is, is impressive. He's always able, he's fluid in his movie, he's smooth. Um, and their passing game is on point, man. Michael Penix has played fantastic. Knock on wood, he's been healthy the last two seasons, which is great for him moving forward. And I think this passing game and how Washington plays, they actually match up, I believe, up front against Oregon. So this is why the point spread is close, which is why I do like Washington to cover. All right, you're laying the three with Washington. Anybody of note for Oregon? You like? You think it's a battle of the trenches, a D lineman you like for Oregon, right? Yeah, Jordan Birch is a, is a really good defensive lineman, and how well he plays will determine how well uh, this defensive line of Oregon plays. So you're going to have to get pressure right up the middle. If you can do that versus this offense, you can frustrate Penix and get him off the spot. Now, granted, he's talented at throwing a move, but he doesn't want to throw on a move. He wants to sit in that pocket and work touchdown and check down. So I feel like how well he does, so will Oregon. Really looking forward to that game. We didn't even talk about Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. And, uh, I mean, that's it's a spotlight game for those guys. Speaking of spotlight games, undefeated USC. Now, they have been flirting with disaster. They're taking on a Notre Dame team that's smarting after they lost to Louisville uh, on Saturday night. Notre Dame is laying two and a half. That's really interesting. So, Notre Dame has two losses. But they're laying two and a half against Caleb Williams and the undefeated Trojans. Yeah, I don't understand this this point spread unless Williams is not showing up and decides to go off to the NFL right away, you know, like today, right? Uh, USC is winning this ball game. Um, But it's going to be entertaining. It's going to be high scoring, and they're going to make you sweat. But what I love about Caleb Williams is the fact that he doesn't care. They were down 17-0 to Arizona, and it was like, all right, well, I guess the game could start now. And he just found a way to make it interesting and found a way to get a win. Uh, But Marshawn Lloyd, terrific tailback. I really like how this guy runs the ball, and I think he's a pro back. Um, He's someone that's going to have to be important in this ballgame against Notre Dame and that defense. But I'm laying these points. I'm taking USC in the points. I like USC to win, but I like Marshawn Lloyd. uh, The tailback is the prospect of why. Obviously, Caleb Williams is Caleb Williams. Um, we're starting to see now we reach that part of the draft process. Uh, we're starting to approach it, Ross, where people are saying, well, maybe Caleb Williams is actually not QB1, right? We reached that part of the cycle. So we're going to get full-fledged. Is he QB1 later on in the you know in, in January? But right now we're just starting to we're – appro- we're in the parking lot of, is he really QB1? Because we start to see a lot of that on Twitter, especially after, you know, a quarterback we'll talk about later has big games against uh, – weaker defense of opponents. Listen, just like the clock will stop on this podcast in about six minutes, whenever the game clock stops, that's time to order in with DoorDash. Pizza cravings that hit at halftime, that's ordering time. 
Dreaming about tacos during a timeout? Boom, they're on your doorstep. Wait, you want burgers, chips, dips, drinks, and wings instead? Even better. Order on DoorDash and get everything you want delivered without missing a minute of the game. Emory, you talked about it. How about Miami at UNC? UNC is laying three and a half. I typically take teams getting three and a half. I still can't believe (laughs) Miami blew that game against Georgia Tech. That is unacceptable, Emory. Unacceptable. Highly unacceptable. And the football guys will not let you get away with playing bad football, situational football, because clearly the dude's elbow was down. But the fact of the matter is you went for it in that situation, so the football guys will make you pay. They will not let that ball get overturned and let Georgia Tech go down and score where you blew a coverage deep down the field. So I just don't understand. Now that's a situation where you may let one loss become two because that's all everyone is talking about. And this is another big game, in my opinion, for Drake May, right? This is a situation where he has to come out and really perform against a very good opponent, a very good defensive opponent. Miami does provide some athletic challenges. Uh, defensively up front, I'm a big fan of Jared Harrison Hunt. Um, and what he brings to the table, I think he could play the five technique. I think he could play a one. I think he could be moved around defensive front interior. I think he has that type of ability. Uh, so he's going to be fun to watch in this ball game. And Drake May, like I touched on, nothing draft Twitter loves more then deep passes from clean pockets where a quarterback can hitch up and hit a wide open wide receiver. They love that boy. That, that, that gets them going. That gets that conversation going of, man, he could actually be QB one. Like, and granted, I'm not here to knock people's takes, but I find it fascinating. You can go and Twitter search any quarterback prospect that hits a deep ball from a clean pocket and everyone goes crazy. But let's talk about the situational football. What does he do on third down? Versus pressure. What does he do in backed up offense? What does he do versus teams um, that have competent defensive uh, schemes and, and and you know better talent on the other side of the ball? How is he able to supersede those challenges? That's the mark of a great quarterback. And I'm not saying that he's not a great prospect. I'm just saying let's see this type of you know play before we laud him versus Syracuse um, and laud him versus another team that they should stump. What was this conversation when they were playing teams that they lost or or not lost, but teams that they lost before like against Clemson last year in these big games? That's what we want to see. UNC's laying three and a half. Emory, what are you taking? The over. Whatever the over under is, I'm taking the over. I can't trust the point spread here with two teams that you don't really know how they will show up. On paper, it says, yeah, you know, UNC got the best quarterback. Um, their offense is clicking, they'll stump Miami. But then we've seen Miami come out, like against Texas A&M, and really take it to the Aggies. So I don't know which team is going to show up, so I'm just going to take the over here. Got it. Well, listen, we're in the fourth quarter of this podcast. In football, the fourth quarter is where the magic happens. It's where games are won, where champions are made. And in business, it's where sales teams become legends. That's why HubSpot built Sales Hub to give sales reps the deal-making tools they need to win their Q4. Sales Hub's prospecting workspace organizes your schedule, goals, and to-do list in one place to save your team precious fourth quarter time. And smart sequences help sales reps close deals faster than ever. So get ready to dominate Q4 with Sales Hub. Learn more at hubspot.com slash sales. Finally, Emery, Wyoming at Air Force Air Force laying 10 and a half. Wow. Air Force has a top five defense in the country combined with their quadruple option attack because they've always been able to throw the football better than option teams combined with this is a big game. This is this should be a ranked game uh, between two ranked opponents coming from the Mountain West. Um I love Air Force in this spot. I'm laying the points with Air Force. I joke, have jokingly thrown throughout there my top four college football playoff bracket was Penn State. Um, I wanted, I forgot who else the other team, but I had Penn State, I had Air Force, and I had TJ Finley because Big Ponch Tula been playing his butt off down there at Texas State. Shout out to my Cajuns getting that win, a very good hard fought win against Texas State. But when you think about Air Force and how well they play disciplined football, along with great defensive play, this is a team that can win in the postseason. Ladies didn't have points. 
All right, he's laying the points with Air Force. He's taking the points with USC. Laying them with Washington. He's got the over Miami and UNC. Hopefully you have another solid week, Emery. Check him out on social media at F-Ball Game Plan. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. The keg is kicked. We are all tapped out. Thanks for tuning in to College Draft. Make sure to also check out the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Even Money, and Fantasy Feast, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. 